Well, good morning. I uh, wanted to do a video here. A uh, question I've been asked a number of times is uh, Daniel chapter 9, verse 27 about the Antichrist or Jesus Christ. Now, I can do a big dedicated study on this, you know, line upon line, precept upon precept. Um, that's fine. I can do that. But uh, there are some questions and some debates about the scriptures that really don't need a lot of attention. Um, and this is one of them. Um, let me just break the whole argument down. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, the prince that shall come and everything, and he'll confirm the covenant with many for one week and whatever. There are people that say that that's Jesus and that he fulfilled everything in the first century and that there's no future fulfillment there and whatever. There's others like myself that say, no, it's actually the Antichrist. Okay, that's the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Jesus talked about that, referred back to it. Um, and I believe in the future fulfillment of the book of Revelation. Now, these people that believe in the historicist type of interpretation, they have to make everything fit into the first century. Now, that presents a huge problem because basically what occurs there is you have to make it that a lot of the things that are clearly physical, like the sun and the moon being darkened and the stars falling from heaven, you have to say that that's just spiritual. Um, that the Antichrist is not really, you know, he was some kind of a you know they, there's different theories that they have i've heard different things but um they they have to spiritualize so much of it and the mark of the beast is not really going to be a future thing it's just happened in the past uh, all the events of revelation they all happen in the past the blood the water turned to blood and all you know it's everything's happened in the past there's some that say no it could be some future fulfillment uh, but not quite as much <clears throat> I reject that whole teaching because to me it's it's really uh, one and done in ignorance. I mean, if you can't look at the world the way things are going right now and see the events of Revelation coming and saying, yeah, the whole world coming together, a new world order, I see that. Um, a uh, alt-right Catholic trad cat kind of a guy, the Antichrist showing up, you know, that they are going to worship. I can see that happening, you know, the mark of the beast, the implantable microchip. Yeah, you know, I can see those things coming in the future, okay? It's not Jesuit futurism or something like that. Uh, that's nonsense. The Jesuits have a way of coming and they'll try to infiltrate truth movements to try to take it over. That's a common military tactic. You know, if you can't beat them, join them. Uh, that doesn't mean that the Jesuits created futurism or something like this. Anybody that believes that there's a future fulfillment to Revelation. They've fallen for the Jesuit lies. Uh, see, here I'm presented with a problem because I can't really be respectful to somebody like that. I mean, either these people that believe this thing, either they're very gullible or they're very satanic. Either you're stupid or you're working for the devil. It's just that simple. To say that there's no future fulfillment of the book of Revelation, it all happened in the first century, Okay, um, you have to spiritualize everything that happened. All the different seal judgments, the trumpet judgments, and the vile judgments. It all happened already? Uh, no. All right. Um, so, I mean, do I do a uh, big study going over everything, or do I just simply say, folks, don't fall for this. This is really stupid. I have other things to do, you know. That's where I'm at right now. Um, if I keep seeing it, then I'll have to do a study to crush the whole stupid heresy. Uh, just like the whole post-trib thing and whatever. I mean, I, I debunked that for years. I've preached, you know, so many studies, so many sermons. And, you know, I put that stuff out for free. Again, you know, this whole time I could have been making, you know, writing books on the issue and making DVDs and whatever. But my decision was that I can do this stuff for free online and put it out there, or I can actually uh, try to get make a living charging money for it and whatever else, then it's harder to access for people. Well, I decided to do it for free, you know, but it, it just blows my mind. Um, it'd be like if there's homeless people in the area here and uh, 
there aren't you don't really see many homeless people in northern maine it gets a little cold here in the winter a little hard to survive but um but that could change in the future the way things are going right now um but it'd be like i put a table out front of my office with free food free money and free clothing and people come and say i don't appreciate the fact that he's a christian i'm not taking it i don't like the fact that he's a pre-trib rapture guy or something so i won't take it well then you starving and freezing and not having money is not my problem all right i put it out for free and you know again i know everybody has a little web camera or you know whatever now and so it doesn't mean anything you know a preacher can come out and put out information and just gets kind of blended in with everybody else doing it and people just say oh he's just a youtuber but you know um, I've been on YouTube since 2008, November 2008. Uh, you can check that, that out on my channel if you don't believe me. If, you know, I get called a liar a lot from these people. But um, what can I say? So, the sunrise is coming out. See if I can get that. I don't know if I can. Okay, there it is. Really beautiful. Really neat looking skies there. That's why I'm... My face is kind of getting a little orange here. Uh, <laughs> so, looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. Uh, so praise the Lord for that. Um, Blue Jay over there saying good morning. Yeah, good morning. Nice to see you too. But um, just show you something I did to my lane here, to my driveway to up our security. Right there, it's, it's my gate. Look at how high defense that is. So what is that, is that a steel cable? No, it's a rope. Actually, it's two ropes. So, it take a long time for people to get through that. You know, they're just, you couldn't get an armored vehicle through that. Uh, actually, you could. Um, why would I do that? Well, uh, if you've been a follower of the ministry, you've heard the story of how people came back here during the winter and drove right back in at four o'clock in the morning looking for a cabin, which is actually three driveways down that way. And um, some major issues there. They were uh, held at gunpoint and uh, I was not a very happy, nice guy. Um, you know, I don't like being woken up at four o'clock in the morning. Um, yeah, so I've already told the story. I won't tell it again, but they claimed that they couldn't see the no trespassing signs that are posted out here and that's partly true because they were covered in snow well with this that little gate right there that i have that you can see behind me back there on the lane that little gate now they would have to actually cut through it or open it well if they do that from a legal standpoint then they can't claim to ignorantly have driven back the lane so i realize very well if somebody wants to get in they can unhook it. There's no lock on it. But the whole point is, if you go through that, and I'm here, then you have no excuse. You've basically entered a property illegally, and you can't just claim that you were lost. It says no trespassing. So, uh, if you have a remote property or whatever, where, or a property where you don't want people coming back in and you have a longer lane, that might be a suggestion for you. Yes, it's a pain to have to get out each time you leave or come back and unhook it and whatever else but uh it's not my job that's oliver's job to do <laughs> one of his uh chores if you will not really much of a chore but um he doesn't always like that especially if it's raining but that's that's life he needs to uh, have some responsibilities so that's another no trespassing sign there there's old pallets but here behind me you can see the choke cherries on the tree see how the the ones i showed they were bright red these are starting to get more ripe they're getting that darker uh, collar to them we're getting so much rain they're actually some of those are starting to split um, they get too wet and then they get too big and and they kind of break um, so yeah raspberry here but so this whole Daniel 9.27 thing, is it the Antichrist? Is it Jesus Christ? It's the Antichrist. All right. Um, and another thing that's very important is 
that uh, the Antichrist confirms a covenant um, between the Antichrist system, which is Roman Catholicism, and uh, the Jews. Okay, and you look at the history of things and whatever else. I mean, they're already doing a lot of that stuff. You know, over there they they gave away the one of the areas over in Jerusalem, the uh, Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and all this other stuff. And the Vatican owns a lot of that real estate in Jerusalem. So there's already covenant type of stuff being made and deals between the Jews and the Catholics. Um, and again, don't fall for this nonsense that there's going to be a uh, covenant between the Jews and the Muslims. There's not one scripture for that. There isn't one thing about that. Well, the Antichrist is going to make a peace covenant, a peace treaty between the Jews and the Muslims. What? <laughs> Where does the Bible say anything at all about that? That's not true. Absolutely not true. See, I just opened up my gate. That was really difficult. See this little thing here? Go like that. And then there's a little kind of a carabiner thing on the on the uh, other tree over here. Um, just a thought if you have a property and you want to keep people out. Or you could even just close it at night or something like that. And then if they come back through, then they've clearly uh, kind of a form of breaking and entering, if you will. Um, so... Uh, but this this whole thing that the Antichrist uh, confirms the covenant, that's there. It's scripture. Okay. But you say, oh, well, no, Jesus confirmed the covenant in the first century. No, Jesus did not bring in the new covenant. That is a lie. That comes in the future. He brought in the New Testament. And a lot of the new versions have changed New Testament to New Covenant. And there's a completely different thing there. It's a very big, very deep theological study. I spent two different videos uh, part one part two because it's very long uh, two different part study going over all the scriptures showing that the new covenant is yet to be fulfilled it's out in the future uh, don't ever fall for the thing of calling the new testament the new covenant the new covenant did not come in yet okay please don't fall for that one either and if it did if you say well the new covenant jesus brought it in well the jews rejected Jesus as their Messiah, so then that means the Jews re rejected the New Covenant. And then you have a real serious doctrinal problem. All right, because then um, it's basically saying the Lord, when he brings in the New Covenant, all Israel is saved at that point. You know, they understand things then. Um, now, if you believe, a, if you're a Bible believer like myself, um, a pre, what would be called pre-trib, pre-millennial uh, type of stand, then you understand that the future events for Israel, the body of Christ is caught up. God starts to deal with the nation of Israel, the time of Jacob's trouble, Daniel's 70th week. And in that time period there, God proves, you know, the revelation of Jesus Christ to the nation of Israel. God proves that he is their Messiah. And he, a lot of them are going to get killed. And then when the Lord comes back at the second coming, battle of Armageddon, he comes down to rescue those Jews that have fled out into the wilderness. And the Lord comes down, destroys the Antichrist and the false prophet and their army. And then he goes into Jerusalem. The saints are sent out to gather all of the elect, all the Jews that have gotten away, that have escaped, that fled into the mountains and everything. And they're brought to the judgment of the nations in Matthew chapter 25. After the judgment of the nations, the sheep go onto the right hand, they go into the kingdom, okay? The physical kingdom of heaven that is on the earth, okay? Understand that. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. It is not heaven, all right? Understand that. Um, and then that millennial kingdom, Jesus Christ is physically on the earth, ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. And again, these, these uh, historicists, they'll take that from the Lord. And that gets me so angry because they're, they're literally saying that... Uh, you know, Jesus does not have any kind of physical rule on the earth. And that is just so wicked. It's so incredibly wicked. So what is promised to the Son, Jesus Christ the Son, the Son of God, that's actually not true. They're not actually going to be given, uh, you know, he won't actually be given uh, rule on the earth. Huh? Uh, that's why I hate that system so much, and that's why I don't really... You know, it's like Paul wrote in the book of Galatians. He says, to whom we gave place by subjection. No, not for an hour. You know, um, I'm not going to subject you to the idiocy of a lot of these heretics. 
unless I absolutely have to, unless it becomes a, to a point where it's really getting big and I see people being deceived by it and whatever else. Again, I'm here to protect you. All right, I do hope that you understand that. A lot of you do, some of you don't. Um, a lot of you think that I'm just here for the money or something, which is really bizarre. Uh, that's a whole other issue that I've been attacked on over the years. But I wish that I could just say, you know what, uh, hey, go to brother so-and-so, this guy, that preacher, that pastor, and they'll teach you the truth on this stuff. But they don't. Uh, these guys are running businesses, little corporations with their church buildings. They're, they're thinking about uh, increasing growth and income and all the other stuff is getting more people in the pews and, and what can we do to get people here and to have good programs for the children and whatever. It's terrible. All right, I'll be back. Battery's dying. All right, sorry about that. Um, these batteries don't last extremely long. But uh, getting back to what I was saying here, you know, the church buildings, they just, I mean, I don't know how many people I've heard from over the years, just into the hundreds, maybe even thousands, I don't know by now, but it's been a lot. I've forgotten names. I, a lot of people, and they talk about how that going to church buildings, there's just, they're just coming out and they're not being fed. They're not, you know, um, you know, it's, it's a terrible thing. And I remember this one pastor years ago and he, he was a church I was going to. And he said, he said, a lot of people have been complaining because they say we're not, we're not being fed at the church here. And he said, that's not why you come to church. He said, you come to church. You don't come to church to be fed. You come to church to, to give of yourself and do things for the church. <laughs> okay you know uh no you come to church to be fed you're supposed to come to this channel and be fed the word of god unreal but that's what a lot of these church buildings do um these pastors they don't know the bible they aren't aware of current events um a lot of them and you know if you say well i have a good church we go to yeah but you know if you have a quote-unquote good church and there's issues with that i won't get into it but if you have a good church, you know that you're in the minority. You know that. You know that most of the church buildings in America right now are completely corrupt and wicked. So, you know, let's not argue and get ridiculous about the whole thing because you're trying to justify a practice which has no basis in the New Testament. You know, church buildings are nowhere in the New Testament for a reason. You know, God didn't, ex you know, just kind of forget to put them in there and then that's supposed to be fixed up later or something. No, it doesn't work that way. So, um, but uh, I do have a more detailed study coming out um, on the thing of what disqualifies a man um, from being in ministry because there are some things that have been brought up lately um, about Jeffrey Grider of Now the End Begins and, um, and I'm just looking to see where Luther's at. Luther, come on. There he goes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that have come out, so I'm not going to be doing a study on it because um, people have this weird notion that uh, the church is for broken people, you know, and you should never kick anybody out. Uh, that's not New Testament. That is not New Testament. Um, so I won't get into all that here because I will be doing an actual detailed study from the scriptures on that whole issue. And um, so I will say, I won't say anything else about that right now, but um, you have to understand that there's a lot of heresies out there that are designed to get you away from the simple basics of scripture. Another one that uh, people come out with and and I've been seeing this in the comments, and I just keep thinking, you have to be kidding me. <laughs> uh, they say that uh, Christians are not supposed to go to heaven. Christians are supposed to stay on the earth. And it kind of goes in with this whole historicism thing. So that's why I'm mentioning it in this video. Um, and, you know, it just boggles my mind. I mean, put it in the comments section uh, any scriptures you can think of where Christians go to heaven. I mean, obviously the most... You know kind of the no-brainer one here is John <laughs> he gets called up to heaven you know um, Paul 
I knew such an one that was caught up to the third heaven and saw things which it's not lawful to utter, you know. He was caught up to heaven, talked about being absent from the body and present with the Lord. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there ye may be also. Uh, I mean, there's so many verses. You know, it's just one of the basics of just understanding Christianity. I want to go to heaven when I die. No, you actually stay on the earth. <laughs> Oh, okay, I didn't realize that, you know. And you get the people that say that, that hell's not real, it's just the grave. And you, um, and I can do the studies. I can do the big, long, doctrinal stuff, go through all the scriptures. But with these people, it doesn't even matter. It does not matter. Um, they don't care. So that's why you give place by subjection, no, not for an hour. You just don't subject the body of Christ to their stupidity. But, you know, if it gets to the point where I'm seeing a lot of people drawn away and pulled away by this whole thing, then I have no choice. I have to say something. So, uh, that's what this video is about. Um, <clears throat> don't fall for this thing of Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 is about Jesus. Um, you know, it's not the Antichrist, it's Jesus Christ. And uh, the body of Christ, or the, excuse me, the... All the events of Revelation already took place in the first century. And, you know, everything that you see there that doesn't make sense, we'll just make it all symbolic. It's all symbolic. You know, um, no, it's not symbolic. Okay, those things are coming. They're going to happen. There is a mark of the beast. There is an antichrist. There is a new world order coming. If you can't see that, well, then God help you. So... Um, that will be it for this video, another rant video, and I um, have to get to the office now, but uh, beautiful sunrise here, get the thing off of me there, and hopefully you can see that, so just uh, stand by the word, brethren, and um, Understand again that there's a lot of professing Christians out there that will try to draw you away and mess you up. And if they can get you off from believing the basics of the scriptures, then uh, they'll draw you into other heresies and other things like that. Um, it is my job to protect the body of Christ, and that's why I'm here. Uh, and I'm going to try my very best to make the ministry grow to the point where I can reach even more people. Um, that's what I'm going to do. So I'll be talking about that in other videos as well. Um, I don't believe in doing things half-heartedly or, uh, well, you know, it shouldn't really grow it too much. I don't want to get too big or something. I'm open to what the Lord wants to do with the ministry, but I'm not going to just hide and whatever from my enemies i'm not doing that so please do keep us in your prayers um i think that's it for now so thank you very much for watching and uh oh one other thing real quickly um i originally came out talking about the new website and i said that there's two different you know donation options there's square and paypal well there's not square <laughs> okay uh they deleted me i don't know why um these leftist liberals that are out there, you know, there might be somebody working on the staff that's a leftist nut or something that hates Christians. Um, something happened. And they just, oh, I know that this might be hard for you to accept, but we're deleting your account and, and uh, we basically don't want you on our website. And, you know, I was on there for a few days, had the Square account for a few days. So, um, just unreal. But, uh, so it's just PayPal yet, um, or through the mail that you can donate to the ministry here, and we do appreciate that. Um, you know, you aren't going to find another ministry like this, unfortunately. And I do say that in all sincerity and truth, brethren. I really wish other people would join the fight, other preachers and things that have been around for a while, you know, guys in their 40s or 50s or 60s, that would answer a lot of the stuff that we answer here. But uh, they, they're too worried about their reputation, they're too worried about their image, their public image, and their church building. They don't want it being closed down because they said the wrong things or something. Uh, irritating. So that is going to be it. 
Um, again, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in upcoming studies.